Hi, this is Shayna, and I am here today with Miss Eden. You can tell we're having fun together. <laughs> and Eden decided she wanted to make a video. She said, Shayna, can I make a video with you? I'm like, of course. She said, I have something really important I'm going to talk about. I think it can help other people. So we're here to talk. What do you want to talk about? Um, being in school and having ADD. I think that's a really important topic. You know, it's considered a learning difference, right? Like a learning disability. Yeah. And it is neurological. It's not psychological. And some kids don't quite understand that. They're kind of mean about it sometimes. Yeah, have you noticed that? Um that sometimes I um some I can focus while not looking at the person so I um can like draw while still focusing and I am sometimes like drawing in class and um, my classmate next to me is like come on look at the teacher we're learning and um I have to tell him that it I can still focus really well um also drawing and um, hearing the teacher and what she's saying. Which is important because sometimes people feel like, especially with ADD, the person's not listening when they are. Sometimes people think we're listening, but we're not. <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, it's just like sometimes I'm just drawing in class, like I'm drawing, um, uh, like, let's say a character, because I draw those and um, um, something's like, come on, pay attention. This is a really important topic that we'll mm -hmm. need to know in our life, which is true. But while I'm drawing, it actually helps me focus, even though I'm not looking at exact um, talker. I can still focus really well on the talker while I draw, and it helps me focus more. And sometimes I even just um, do random, like I just... Um, just making it like lines and I don't even know what I'm drawing and I just look up at the person and that and I also sometimes use um fidgets that I can get from stores and I can just squish them and stuff. That's helpful. You know, I have a sensory box right here Ooh, that I keep hey. with for me with I'm working with clients and when I go places to help people. So, you want to take a look at what's in here? First, I want you to smell it before you open it. Oh, it smells nice. I have these. Do you? Yeah. Do you like them? Yeah. Okay, you want to say what those are and explain? These are little needle squishies. There is a strawberry, an orange. Oh, this one's different. What does that look like? It's an orange. It's a peach. What? It's a peach. It looks like an orange. And it's different from the one that I have. I have this exact strawberry one, and I used to like squish the bottom, like the little hole where the, the little berry comes out. This one feels different than the one that I have. I actually have this exact one, but it's downstairs, and it feels like a strawberry. And it's weird. Let's see what the banana is like. I have the banana right here. I have some other sensory tools in here too. Okay. I, um, I had another and apparently somebody really liked it because it's not in here anymore. Aww. But it, whatever happens, it's helping somebody have a better quality of life. You want me to keep these out and you can play with yes. them? Yeah. So yeah. I have this fidget that I bought and it's a little sushi and I squished this for fun. And he's here, Mr. Sushi's just sitting on the side, um, giving us good luck. Sometimes I just pretend that the fidgets are real, cause, um, yeah. Sometimes when I go to stores, I like to touch everything for some random reason. So I have to bring a fidget with me, and I have to, like, it has to be big enough, it can be this too, where I do this, and I just, like, squish it in with both hands, like, do, do, do. And then I'm walking through the store and I'm like, oh my goodness, I want to touch that. But this, 
is better to touch and it's more sanitary. So that's a much better option. The Mr. Squishies is different thing. And then I also keep these in my little bag right now. Having a hard time getting them out of their little pouch. Okay, I got it. Thank you, love. Mm -hmm. So these are pug yoga cards. Oh, pugs. Pugs. Oh, a pug down there. Yeah, so here's the pug. It's a little yoga card mm -hmm. set. And um here is a picture of a unicorn doing bridge. I can do a, a unicorn bridge. Doing I know. I can do bridge too. It's fun. But I'm it's not doing it fun. Dress. No, not in the clothes we have on. Here's the pug. A so pug. what? The re reason I have these in here is sometimes when it's hard to concentrate, doing movement is really helpful. Yeah. And when we're dressed for it, we get to go into whatever card you would draw, and then we say, "Let's hold this pose." So here's triangle. It's a panda bear doing triangle. Triangle. So we could just hold that for a while and breathe into triangle and move through a triangle. Exactly. And just hold it for a while yeah. and see how we feel and how we're breathing. Yeah. And after we do a little bit of movement, but really mindful based movement where we hold a pose for a while, we can get back to doing what we're supposed to do, whatever yeah. the task is. We can refocus so much better. Sometimes in class, I um, don't have fidgets, which happens rarely. So I do this finger movement with my hands and I like make little things. I make little dinosaurs, like my little dinosaur ear that I make. And he can eat the sushi. But I have to like make little finger movements. Sometimes me and my friend are paying attention, but we make our little finger puppets and they eat each other and we can still focus while we do it. So one of the things I have in here, I have an assortment of many, 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 you can see all the green caps. Those are all therapeutic grade essential oils. Everyone is different and sometimes it just helps if we get to smell these. It can help us drop in and center and focus. Oh, this is a few of them that she gave to me. Really? Smell this one. Do you like that one? Mm -hmm. It's minty. calming. Minty. Mm -hmm. Does it help you focus? Mm -hmm. Sometimes minty things help people focus. Lavender really helps me focus. Oh, good. I have a lot of lavender. I love lavender. Let's read this one. I can't read it. What does this one say? This is eucalyptus. Ooh. Uh, I don't feel dirty nice. And what we can do is put a bunch of these together on the same napkin or a Kleenex. I have tissues, I have cotton that I keep in a sensory box. And we can breathe in and then when the person's feeling agitated at school or having a rough day, a rough moment, something, then we hold on to this, we can smell it, we can keep it in our pocket, we can breathe, breathe it in. But we have all these things that we can do with either the piece of cotton and we can layer the fragrances that really help us. And we find the ones that work, we find what doesn't work, and we might only pick three or four that day and say, I like these three, these really yeah, help me. I'm just still feeling good and it helps me be more proactive about my work or school day and it helps me focus a little more and I feel more proactive about my life. And, yeah, and you have a lot going on at 10. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the things that sometimes you have a hard time focusing on? What, what affects you? Sometimes um, when our class is um, reading all together, mm -hmm. I kind of, um, I can still hear everybody's reading and I, and I look at the book every few seconds. So I'm drawing and then a few seconds I look at the book and then I still know where we are. And so if the teacher calls on me to um, read, I still know what's going on. Oh, food fidgets, right? <laughs> we have banana, strawberry, what is this one again? Peach. A peach and a sushi. The Lots of one. food. <laughs> <laughs> if I could rate my And they all have different textures. Yeah, this one is different. It feels like the thing dried out inside because mine fe actually feels like, so my banana feels a little bit more squishy than this. My mm -hmm. strawberry is a little bit more squishy all, and then this one, actually has like um uh like really really soft it's like icing but it's like shaving cream i'm not sure what's inside of it 
and it looks like that shaving cream, I don't know how, like hardened up inside of it and I really like the texture of it, so that's why I was saying this this one. If I could rate my favorite to my least favorite, this one would be my favorite. Have the best texture. <laughs> then this one. Yeah. It's really nice and I like the looks of it. And then I really like the banana, it's like stretchy. You can squish it. You can like um sometimes in class you could just poke it and it makes a little dent. And you could just watch it slowly come back up. That's pretty satisfying. And how does it help you refocus for class? Because sometimes I'm in class and having a hard time focusing. Can I borrow a pencil by me? Absolutely. Let me grab a pencil. Here's a pencil for you. Thank you. The black one you wanted. This one's really pretty. Thank you. It has space. Terrifying. <laughs> it has um, stars and moons yeah. and so shooting stars and asteroids and things on it. Yeah, yeah, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Not all of them, but most of them. <laughs> so I'm just writing in, so I'm just um, doing my work in class and I just suddenly need the urge to move. So I set my paper to the side and I have to do this really fast. Or maybe if it's a pen, I just do like click, 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 click. Like when I fidget with my mm -hmm. pen because I have like nothing to fidget with. <laughs> Um, definitely nothing over here, but, um, <laughs> um, you need to fidget, some, you sometimes you have to, like, fidget with pencils and stuff, and then you could maybe fidget with the other hand, because, what's the word again? What? I can write with two hands. Oh, you're ambidextrous. Yes, I can write with both of my hands, so sometimes I can, like, fidget with both hands, but I fidget differently with both hands. This is my left hand and my right hand, and I usually use my right hand to write, and everything else I use my left hand. So, um, I just need to fidget with both hands mm -hmm. because then um, they're um, fidgeted out equally, as I could say. Right. Because um, I need to fidget with one, and then the other one needs me to fidget with it, so I do this. And then maybe like maybe five minutes later, I'm still focusing, but I'm a really fast writer and I really need like handwriting. So then I go back to my work and I um, finish. And when I'm excited, I do this sometimes. Like it's like me doing this. Like yes, but I do this. Like it's like a little clap. Like me doing this, but mm -hmm. this, and it's exciting. It helps, right? Yes. You know, right here on your forehead, yes, your temples. Do you ever tap right there? Yes, I actually did that earlier today. It can really help with focus. Yeah, I um, I actually did a little bit behind, like above the ears, but mm -hmm. I did not like right here, because there's like a bone poking out right here. So I pressed it. Oh my goodness, that helped me focus a lot. It can make a difference. Now I can, now I know this for class. <laughs> Tapping techniques can be so helpful for refocusing. And sometimes you could grab all of, I would recommend two or four of your fingers and do this. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole tapping method you can go through. There's a nerve that comes from the back of the head down into the eye. It's called the occipital nerve. It's on both sides. And you can tap along this nerve and then tap under the eye, tap out here. There's tapping methods that you can do. Yeah, sometimes I use jaw. two or four Tap fingers here. and I do this, like right in front of the ear, like right mm -hmm. here. And it makes my face feel really relaxed and it helps me focus a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I'm working in class and we could say she's the teacher, even though I sit in the back of the room. I just um, massage my face while she's teaching and it helps me focus a little bit. That's right. It can be really helpful. So there's a lot of ways that we have found to cope with with the attention issues that come up in classroom and other places. Um, what about sensory issues? Do you ever find that if the lighting's too bright, it's hard to focus, or if there's a lot of certain sounds in the background that's yes. hard to focus? If there is like there are certain smells, it's hard to focus. Um, I always smells one because usually I don't focus on the smells, but um, there's sometimes people in class and I, and people think that they're not going to get caught, but everybody does it, and they're just like whispering, so the whole class sounds like um, a person 
just one person is talking really loud and the teacher knows that. That's but, hard to focus. And I'm trying to focus on my paper because I'm trying to get good on my test. This happened for a test and I was working on my test. It was actually on computer, so I was working on my test. I was thinking, so I was pencil. I was actually fidgeting like this because it helps me focus. So when I'm thinking, um, as you could say, this this could be the computer screen. Let's move it where you can see it. <laughs> um, maybe her coffee can be the computer screen. No, yeah, it's tea. hot tea. Hot tea. Always hot tea. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. So um, her um, my Kim computer. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, <dear. laughs> clumsy. Um, I sometimes I was on the test. I was thinking, I was, I was writing on my paper, and right the wrong hand. <laughs> I was writing on my paper, and then I was, I clicked to the next question, and I was doing this while I was reading it, and then, I think it was in math, yeah, it was in math, and I was doing this, because I was thinking about it, because, um, yeah, I think it was either a fraction or an exponent, and um, even though I'm really good at exponents, but at the time I wasn't. <laughs> so um, I was um, really confused and then I was like, okay, so this is the method that I learned how to do it an easy way. So I do this times this, and then I multiply that by this, and then I multiply that by this, which is a number times an exponent equals um, a number. <laughs> so, um, oh my goodness, it's called Boss Banana. <laughs> it has different names on the box. This is a lot of different things on the box. It can, the box yes. itself can be distracting, even though the sensory integration tools in it can be really helpful. Yes, <laughs> it's just like, you're focusing with a toy. It's, it's like this is the cereal when we were little. Not, not in the iPad generation, it came right now. It was before we had iPads and before we had those um, square TVs. <laughs> um, cereal <laughs> um, <laughs> box. You don't know life without screens. <laughs> I know life without screens. You, you were not born when iPads came out. What? Was it before or after? They've been out a while. So, was, so like maybe in like... In a flat screen TV? That was early 2000s. The first time I saw one. It was before... No, like It was, I think, 2004, I think, is the first time I saw a flat screen. Like 19... 2003 or something. Four. There's a fly flying around. So it's like 19 something. And, um... Before their iPads came out, and the kids were just like <laughs> glued to the screen. Before that, pretend this is cereal. I'm just gonna squish it instead of eating it because I'm not eating this. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, you're just eating your cereal and looking at the box, reading all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you go to the bathroom, you read the back of the or something and I read it so much that I know what everything says I think we need magazines <laughs> magazines in the bathroom just in case you forget your phone or something I don't know I love this take this from a 10 year old she's the expert she'll tell you what to read in the bathroom the back of your conditioner until you get sick of it you are so funny. I memorized the conditioner. What? You are. Yes. Okay, so attention. Attention issues are real. Do you, do you know do you know what part of the brain happens with attention issues? Like what's going on? Which part of the brain's affected when it comes to spontaneity and interrupting and um, bursting out with a new idea? It's a certain part of the brain. Do you know where it comes from? The brain. The prefrontal cortex. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> prefrontal cortex. I can right never here. say that. It's okay. But the same things that, that cause attention deficit 
are the same things that cause OCD, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, where somebody has to do the same thing several times to feel that it's complete. Um, for some people, it's saying the same thing over and over and over expressing it even within the same setting until they feel that it's moved out of their body and that their throat's not tight, that they've had some kind of emotional release from it. Sometimes it is shutting a door 15 times in a row. Sometimes it's washing your hands four or five times in a row to make sure that they're super clean, but it's always that same number every single time. Well, I guess it would be, real, I guess they'd be pretty sanitary. But what if well, they play with their But friends? sometimes people's hands bleed from it. But what? They dry out their hands, washing them so much that their hands will bleed. That's but they have is obsessive compulsive disorder. Mm -hmm. But if we if we give it a limit of okay, I'm only going to do this thing two times. It is an orange. And no more than two. Is it an orange? It says far out orange. Okay, thank you for correcting me. <laughs> All this time I thought it was a peach. A peach. Shows you I thought now. peaches were pink. Well, they're kind of this color called peach, which that's a peach color. It's not oh. bright orange. <laughs> I don't know. I don't eat peaches. I know. I eat like peach but you also, slices. You don't eat oranges either, I but you I still know the color. I don't. Of course I, I do. What color is a carrot? <laughs> a kinder kindergarten me. Hmm. I know that oranges are orange. A carrot? I don't know that. <laughs> You're so much fun. <laughs> All my friends do that. They do. So what is it like having friendships and having attention issues? Um, is it hard to keep friends sometimes? Um, or do people get frustrated? I usually get frustrated sometimes because sometimes I, um, so we're sitting at the playground, um, this orange, oh wait, this one has a face. This, um, Gotta go with the face. <laughs> what? It's more realistic. Hey, it's your pick. There's no wrong answer. <laughs> well, kind of true. So, um, my friend, um, can I say her name? Oh. Um, she likes me. Okay, you, she's asking if she can say her friend's name. <laughs> yeah, you I'm can sure give a first name only. First name only, yes. Okay, this her is. Her name is Kenzie. Okay. We're really, really good friends. We've been friends since second grade. We like Kenzie. <laughs> you really like Kenzie. She's Radix right. likes Kenzie. Oh, Say your name and yeah, Radix is right here barking. Oh, wait. Sorry, Kenzie. I just squished your face. <laughs> so, Kenzie and me are just sitting here. The, I Kenzie, have a feeling it won't hurt her. <laughs> Kenzie, this isn't true. It's, just, it's, it's, Kenzie would actually never do this. It's, um, it's, um, what's the word? An example. There we go. I <laughs> found the word. Um, an example of Kenzie, even though she'd never do this. I just picked a random name. So, we're just getting here. She's talking to, about Harry Potter. Just a random thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'd actually never wander off about Harry Potter because I'm addicted. So, um, let's say something that I don't like. You are? Uh, you, I have a cat named Hermione Granger. Oh, duh. <laughs> I had a fish named Harry Potter, but he died when I was oh. at my friend's house. Harry Potter's not allowed to ever die. He's Harry Potter. Okay. We what? love Harry Potter a so lot. So he's immortal? As immortal as you want him to be for a fictitious character. He'll live until he's lonely and has no more friends. <laughs> The expert. <laughs> so, if you're immortal and you got to choose when you die, if just one person in the world got to choose when they die and they were a really popular person, mm -hmm. I would wait until all my friends are dead and then I would die then. Oh, so you get, you get to pick Because then I'd be then. sad and lonely because then I'd have no one to talk to. Oh. And, Including a friend. Oh, you're loved. You're loved. He's loved. Very loved. 
Braddox is right here and he's very loved. He's very loved. Braddox helps us communicate. He helps us talk. Yes. He gets playful when it's time. He has his sensory toys. He has his sensory toys. And Can he's acting out with them right now. Oh, wait, never mind. The tug of war is happening. <laughs> um, it's funny that, that what, what Eden chooses to do and helps her ground and center with, you know, fidget toys and sensory things. Radix ends up doing the same thing. He's literally mirroring her behavior as we're sitting oh, here in Radix the office. Radix wants you to throw the toy. But you know what? Radix might have to wait a little. Aww. I will play tug of war for a second. But my attention's with you right now. Yeah. That he's that he's responding know. to your energy, which is it's great. Just letting you know because my energy is always really happy because I'm a really happy person. It's true. But we were talking about friends away. and how hard it can be with friends sometimes having attention issues because they want us oh, to yeah. focus or do something and sometimes we have a hard time with that. Yeah. So what is that like for you? Oh yeah, I was going to finish my example with Kenzie over here. Mm -hmm. She's sitting there. Oh, oh, he thinks that's a toy. Okay. Um, yeah, then just to let Kenzie, you know. Uh -huh. A pencil. She won't want to play with a pencil because no. they're boring. Right. <laughs> and Kenzie's just sitting here. There we go. Looks like I'm exploding. So Kenzie's sitting here talking about um, what's something that I don't like and I feel like it's boring. Uh, I'm sick of hearing her talk about dragons. Okay. Because she talks about dragons 24-7. So she's sitting here. It's her favorite thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she's sitting here talking about, oh, but yeah, she's not talking about dragons as much. That's surprising. I always hear her talk about dragons like Eden, dragons here, dragons there, dragons there, and rings of fire here, rings of fire there, and I don't hear about rings of fire anymore. That's great. So, right? That's a good thing. Yeah. She's trying to find what's interesting to you. Oh yeah, she talks about um, um, things that I don't want to watch that I've seen before that I don't like. So she's just like, Eden, watch this, watch this, watch this. And this person did this, and it's so cool. It, this happens in the first five years that they've been a YouTuber. So um, she's just talking there, and I'm wandering off, looking at the clouds, and I'm looking at the wood chips, or the tree, or all the other annoying kids playing. And um, she's just like, Eden, Eden, you there? And I'm just like, because I'm sometimes you just like stare at something and then your right. eyes get really comfortable there. So then you don't right. want to get your eyes off of it. And then it's so right. comfortable that you don't blink. And I was just like, and she was just like, Eden, 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 look. Eden. She, she didn't do this, but it's. And, um, what was she trying to get you to focus yeah, on? Yeah, um, the little videos that I don't want to watch. Lucy watches everything over there. So, and then she's like, Eden, Eden, look at this. And I was like, and then I finally um, zone back in into Earth. And I'm just like, oh, yes, sorry. And she's like, did you hear me? I did hear her, but um, sometimes you hear things and you don't want to say anything because you're focused on the one thing you're doing. Like That's right. Like, Eden, look at these dragons that I drew because she does this. Eden, look at this animal that I drew. She does this all the time. And I'm just looking at things. And sometimes she has to bonk the table and we're just like, yep, back to earth. <laughs> and she's like, look at this dragon. She's really good at drawing dragons. So. Wow, what a beautiful talent. Yeah. It's so nice that you can recognize that with her. And when she shows you her art, do you realize that she's trying to connect with you? Mm-hmm. Okay. We're really good friends. You are. Yeah. But she helps bring you into connection with her when you're kind of going somewhere else because your focus is somewhere else, right? And she's really kind and she understands that I have ADD. So, um, she's okay with it because her brother sometimes does that. You know, he doesn't have ADD, he just doesn't like focusing. He doesn't, he's, he likes, <laughs> he likes focusing, he just ignores her. He, he either wants attention or he gets zoned into games. He's four, by the way. He's four. <laughs> four. <laughs> so young. He's appropriate for four. But, you no. know, 
You don't think he's appropriate for porn? Not at all. Why? I don't even like golf. He said curse words and other things that oh. YouTube doesn't want to know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, nice. we're, not, we're not we're not here to tattle, um, are we? No, not no. here to tattle today. No, um, we don't do that. Why? No. How does that affect friendships? Some people think it's an insult to say rude things about their family, and Levi is really cute and he's really kind, but the one thing that made me laugh so much is once I was on a call with Kenzie, and um, she had to go do something, like let her chickens in feed them or something, or let her dogs out, so Levi took the stage but her video was off, so I didn't get to see what Levi um, was doing. So, um, Levi was um, looking at the, so I don't know if he was looking at the camera, but he was talking to me. And I was like, hi, Levi. And he was like, hi. So, um, then I was like, so I say random things to him because he doesn't understand sometimes. And I think it's funny. <laughs> and I think it's funny to see him like, huh? Huh? So, um, um, I was like, hi, do you like me? Like, um, because we're really good friends, me and Levi, because we made a friendship when Kenzie was gone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and he was like, yeah, you're such a cool friend. And then I was like, hey, do you like Kenzie, your sister? And he was like, um, I don't know. And it made me laugh so hard. And my mom was there at the time, and she burst out laughing. <laughs> and it made me laugh so hard. I was like, um, you don't know if you like your sister or not? Like, that's so funny and so honest. But we're both only child, so. Yeah. And it's a different way of communicating, because I'm an only child, you're an only child, only daughters, only girls, right? That's, that makes a difference. We grow up more independent. We do in some ways, right? Some ways. Some ways, and in other ways, we're kind of like, Dad. <laughs> Can you help me open the pickle jar? Actually, never happens. I open all the jars. <laughs> the jar. Can you help me open the cherry jars? Like, I didn't do that. I actually oh, had cherries funny. earlier today, and I was like, I was expecting to be like, Dad, help me, but I actually was just like, easy. Yeah, I was envisioning such a different kind of help than what you said. <laughs> Strength help? I don't know. What That's were you so expecting? Were you I had no expectation. I was I was envisioning something different. My expectation was not there. I know better than to have an expectation. Were you like, yes. I know you well enough. Can you help me, um, like, pick out um, um, an outfit? I don't do that, but no, you don't. You're too independent. <laughs> you have your own style. I chose my outfit directing. today. Yes, really she did. She chose up by herself. She did a great job. And my yeah. boots. That Love I the bought boots. myself. You can't see them, but you bought those with your money. Uh oh. <laughs> you said you bought them yourself. No, I didn't. Okay. Sorry. Um, wait a minute. Did I? <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't matter. I know that you buy some of your things yourself. Yeah, and that's I really bought... cool. But that's part of your independence. I buy some fidgets with my own money. There's nothing in here that I bought. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, I bought, um, sometimes you buy something, but you don't, you want to buy two things. You don't have enough money for it. And you wanted the other thing more when you actually buy the other thing. So you're just like, and your friend gets it, and, you're, and it's so convenient when your friend wanted the toy you have, and you wanted the toy your friend that had. Toy swap. And that happened to us. It's called a trade. We actually traded toys. He wanted a dog. Um, he actually wanted a banana fidget, so I gave him a banana fidget. It's like three times bigger than this, and it has Orbeez, and it has a smiley face. And he gave me um, a infected dog that I wanted. <laughs> it's a squishy infected dog. Well, it's blue and purple. <laughs> convenient when you want that something and your friend was like, oh my goodness, I hate them and I don't want it. And you're just like, oh my goodness, can I have them? 
That actually happened. I got some mochis. That's a food toy. And I named them after my classmates. <laughs> That's pretty fun. I love that you care about the things you have, the people uh, in your life, your Jamie. classmates, and you name things after your classmates. The mark fell off. This shows a lot of care. The mark fell off. Let's put it in the trash. Then the trash can right here. Oops. Into the trash. Well, now it's just a sushi with eyes. <sighs> there goes this. There goes the mouth. And then when the, the eyes come off, it will just be a sushi. It's okay. Whatever. It's a sushi. It's still. Or a cyclops it's still, sushi. It's still ta tactile. Oh. You still get to. Maybe this could be like little, um, what's it called? Um, little, I think it's seaweed. Little seaweed pieces. Oh. But black. Black seaweed. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. I, I I'm actually, a fan of seaweed. I actually like seaweed. I know. It's really good. It's I keep trading between these two. Like, which one do I choose? So we have a lot of things sitting right here in this space. So whatever Eden needs, she can grab and utilize for that moment. Yes. At school, I bring a few fidgets. I got a little fidget bag. I put some little small koala fidgets in there. And then I put the mochi in there. And I put some squishies in there. And then Didn't I, I'll help you focus it. Yeah, I went to reading with that, and then I was playing with my little um, mochi, and I was just like, yeah, let's play with mochi. And I was just like, yeah, I get excited about this. I'm going to play with my koala. And it's actually a little koala clip, so I was just opening it, opening it, and then I was like, okay, and then That's straight back to the mochi. So it's really convenient. And then I was like, yeah, let's try to do this long mochi. Let's get a tall mochi. <laughs> At school, do you have a sensory integration room? What's that? Like a sensory room where there's up lighting instead of lighting from above coming down. And maybe um, there's softer lighting and oh, um, like there's nice um, in our class. like interactive things that you can like maybe like bubble tubes or... What's a bubble tube? There are tubes of water that shoot up in bubbles and you can oh. look at the bubbles. You sh they or, should make mini ones and I'd buy that. <laughs> They do have them, and then there's like lava lamps and things where people can kind of sit, fixate into this nice atmosphere, and <laughs> and then like sensory chairs and the furniture like is in the room, all decorated by the school, but it's to help integrate with calming and sensory, and um, then you can interact with all kinds of there, tactile things all around the room. There is a person in my school that does hand out fidgets, but um, to some certain people, and I'm not one of those certain. Okay. And uh, I don't know why. I don't know how to get the fidgets. You know, maybe ask your school about having a sensory room. Yeah, but I already bring like a hundred fidgets every day, so I don't. Well, but they get most of fidget anywhere. for everything, or sometimes do other things help. I find that other things help. They bring. They only give us fidgets. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they give us fidgets. This pretend it's a lava lamp. The last time I went to my friend's house. And she had a lava lamp. This is what I did. Lava lamp. I stared harder into it with like an open mouth, and I was like, "It's so calming." What is this beautiful magical thing? How? Uh, what year is it? I don't. I didn't say that, but I don't know. When it comes to sensory input and things that we need to help calm and regulate, I don't think a decade or a century matters when it comes to something that works, right? Like the necklace you have on. You pick that necklace, it's a beautiful crystal, and you like that it's smooth Looks and like you can touch it. Inside. It has a geode in it. Oh, it has a geode. Mm -hmm. And you can touch it and it's smooth and it's calming and that's like something that you could wear to school oh, hello. that you could also touch, right? And that yeah. could be calming. And then this up here. Yeah. And the dog wants it. So what advice do you have for parents who have a child in preschool who, who that will be going to public school for kindergarten and maybe has attention and focus issues? Do you have something to say? Or yeah, and actually I had focus issues when I was in um, um, kindergarten, but I also, I don't know what this is, but when I made a small little mistake, I cried really hard because um, I didn't know a line to get into for kindergarten to go into my classroom. So mm -hmm. I just walked into the opposite classroom and they were like, you're not in this class. I was like, oh. And then I cried really bad in the bathroom. And then I came back to my class and I was like, yeah, I'm 
Percolate. Yeah, but I still, I didn't have any fidgets then, because I had, I had no idea what they were, but I, um, I did do this, I put the pencil in my hand, this is the eraser, not the sharp side, that is a really sharp pencil, and I did this. I'm glad you did not poke yourself. I did not poke myself, okay, maybe I did like two, two, three hundred times? <laughs> you were not expecting that, were you? <laughs> But oh, yeah. ten. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical age. So, what what would you say to somebody younger than you going to elementary school and public school and and having problems with focus and attention? Would you have any advice for them? Yeah, maybe you could um, figure out a way where you could like play with your fingers or something, or press the um, little part right here on your finger because um or some skin there that is that where you can squish so i think you just oh so it's like touching and pressing with a nail into the tips of your fingers yeah and it feels really nice so um that helped me focus a lot this year and my friend didn't like using her hand because she didn't want to do so she did, um, this was Kenzie, so she did this, and with her other hand, she, like, used this, but she, um, let's say this is her hand, she did this, and, like, maybe she put my fingers down, and then she put them back up, and that actually felt really nice, and when I do it by myself, it still feels really nice, and sometimes to focus, you can just do this, and count, uh, like, to ten, or five or maybe until you calm down and you're like okay I'm ready to focus and you focus at the teacher and while you can do that you can fidget with your finger or if you buy a fidget maybe you could so my teacher um, wants us to she says if you have a fidget you either put it on the desk like I barely know it's there or you put it under your desk and I shouldn't even know it's there so I usually put it like on my lap like and I squish it, and I usually do that with my little cheese and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and that helps me focus a lot. And when I don't have my mochis within my backpack or something, I just um, I do this, but I squish at the same time. I squish, 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 squish. I can do this because I have double jointed fingers. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Can I show you something really fun that you can do with a friend at school? You could bite each other with your monster yeah. hands. Put your hand up. Has to, it has to match, so it'd have to be this hand to this hand, okay? So our hands are there. We wrap our fingers, we keep our index finger up. Keep the index finger up. And you do this. And uh, go, this one, and then put the other fingers down. So our hands are interlocked, you can see, but we have our index finger up. I want you to, so you can feel the finger, right? You feel your finger uh -huh. against mine? Take, take, take your finger and rub. And see how that feels. Just yeah. both sides at the same time. Feels so, the same. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, how? <laughs> oh, and isn't when I do so this, mean? and when I do this, but that, we feel different. But it's something that we can do with a friend, a close friend yeah. at school, who can help us integrate when we need something extra more than just the same tactile thing. You can do something like that with someone else and you can breathe together, synchronize your breathing. So if we do this and we breathe together and then focus on breath in, breath out. So these thumbs down and just the index finger and I'll rub those fingers together like you did before and then breathe together. It's at the same time. The reason for that is it synchronized our we nervous should, systems maybe we could, like, so that we could calm and breathe together. And it's really good for centering and slowing heart rate and getting more oxygen to more parts of the body. The other half it helps us, helps us breathe. Maybe with um, this, with at the this? same time. Yeah, maybe the it doesn't same work when there's something maybe, interfering. You want to get as many. Maybe we yeah. could clap at the same time. We can clap together, right? Uh, no, so we have to do it at a random time. 
But we have to. I don't understand. Show me. So we're doing this. So okay. Together. We have this. And then. Okay. Since we're together, maybe we could clap at the exact same time. Like, we could put our hand back, take a few deep breaths. And mm -hmm. we clap at the when same we, time. When we exhale, then that push, it feels really good. You want to breathe out and then exhale when we hit? Yeah. It felt really nice. That was a good release. Yes. So, coping mechanisms for handling school with attention issues. From the expert right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have a sensory room where some schools have it, but you get to bring sensory things to school. Now you literally have an entire toolbox of sensory <laughs> things to use at school. I love this. Good. And it's here. I you get to use it any time. Is there anything that you feel is unfinished or anything that you would like to add or say before the video ends? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was going to say it in the middle of the video like 15 minutes ago. Dang, I forgot what it was though. So, um, some things small can make you really angry. Like, so let's say I'm talking to her and I'm like, um, so she's taking a drink, for example, and um, I'm like, uh, let's ask a question, and uh, let me say, um, hey, do you like um, sushi? And she's still taking a drink for like five seconds, which is really short <laughs> compared to me. And um, then I look away, waiting, and then she's like, oh, yeah, yes, I do. And then I was like, wait a minute, what? I didn't say anything. And she's like, yeah, you said, do you like um, sushi? And I was like, um, I said that? <laughs> you just forget. You're like, oh, my goodness, it took you so long to make it five seconds. <laughs> and then sometimes I just feel like I need to be left alone for no random reason because um, I have a lot of people in my life. <laughs> and then... Um, sometimes, but it makes me, it's weird because it makes me mad randomly because I want to be left alone, but people don't know that, and I know that, but when people tap me on the shoulder, I'm just like, please leave me alone, and like the most angry voice, and I'm just like, and if I had this and I was that angry, it would have popped. That's how bad I am. But so how do you manage anger? I manage anger by um, when I just want them to be left alone, I go to an area in my school where no one goes anymore. It was a really popular place and no one goes there anymore. So I sit on the little bar area and the monkey bars, because there's two monkey bars, and this one's like far, spread apart from the playground. So I sit on that and I relax. And I take deep breaths, I'm like, and then I count to three, and then I breathe that out. So I um, do for three seconds, and then, I, sorry, there's a fly. Um, <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And then, um. I know, I hear. Yeah, there's a beeping Some things, I don't know. Some of my lips watch, because that thing's loud. So, um. What was I saying again? Well, you go to the monkey bars where there's yeah, only two I, that where you like to sit and people yeah, just and went there. Yeah, and then I there. just, so I breathe in and then I hold that and that, so I breathe in for three seconds, I pause for three seconds, and then I breathe out for three seconds. And that usually stops and I usually feel like I can be social after like less than ten. And it helps me a lot with like, okay, I'm ready to be social now. Maybe I need to be for like maybe like five more minutes, I can just do my own thing, talk about my own stuff, and then I can be back to social. And maybe I can take a like a, maybe I can take like a stab of being social again, and I can be okay, and I won't be mad anymore. Even though I probably will be, <laughs> but I took my breaths, so I'll probably be okay. I think that's great advice. I would love to see a lot of drivers do that. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just in traffic. In traffic. They're, this is probably how they take their breaths. 
<laughs> like, come on, get out of the room! It's my spot! It's a green light! Come on! <laughs> it's, I, I smile a lot. I laugh at everything, myself being first. I don't laugh at other people, but I will laugh with them. Yes. And my, my coping skill that I have taught people for 20 years, maybe longer now, when they're in traffic and they're feeling frustration and there's crazy drivers on the road and nothing is stable and somebody's showing what a poor quality driver they are, like, watch me show off my excellent driving skills, you know, those people. Oh, goodness. You know the type? You've seen those, right? Yep. Yep. I have. I call them a turkey. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Because you can't be mad when you call somebody a turkey. Because a turkey is a beautiful animal. Call first them of the all. name that I call my dog. I call her Moochie or Brain Fart. I call her Brain Fart because I, she's really dumb. And really. she means her, her dog at home. She's not talking about Radix. Radix no, is super Radix smart. Is really, really, really smart. He's smart. He's right here and he's being so good. He's super smart. He's really smart. But, Frida, Frida over here. She does that. And then I call her Moochie. Um, and then I sing a random song. But if you call her Turkey, you can really laugh. <laughs> and if you see somebody who's not the world's best driver, eh, Turkey. And you I laugh. Say. Don't get mad. It's just Turkey. What about there's koala? no cursing. There's nothing. Koalas are cute and cuddly. And they Dang have it, little you turkey. Noses. Exactly. Dang it, you koala. <laughs> uh, to me, the word's turkey. I just turkey. love it. Turkey's my go-to. What about, um, banana? Just, it's just turkey. Dang it, you bananas. It's just, just, just turkey. <laughs> no, somebody might be a little bananas. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> bananas make me laugh, but turkey loves to make me laugh. Turkey. That's turkey's my word. Turkey's the good name. Because I got turkey. Maybe uh, it's a good coping skill for you. When I was four. When you frustration, when I was turkey's four, your go-to. Yeah. When I was four, my mom called me Fornado, so. <laughs> what? I make a mess. I'm organized now. Since like two years ago, but <laughs> I'm really organized. You now. are. You're really good. <laughs> okay. Does this feel complete to you? Is there anything else you want to say? That, um. That all of you are really loved and you're all special. That's beautiful. Including me. You are incredibly special and I'm so grateful you're in my life. You're special. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for wanting to take the time to make a video. Mm -hmm. Don't ever forget how important you are. And don't forget how important you are. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be here if you weren't here. <laughs> You are loved and you are valued and your value will never ever change no matter what happens in your life, no matter what experience you have. You will always be as valuable in that moment, in your hardest moment, in your worst moment as you are in your most beautiful and best moment as you are right now. Your value will never ever change no matter what. Mm -hmm. I always fix my bad moments. I've learned how to fix my bad moments. And your value of you being even never changes in those moments, ever. And the value of how my friends all love me because all of my friends are so kind to me, even though they know I sometimes am angry for no random reason, <laughs> and they're all really kind about it, and they, they know sometimes that um, I sometimes don't focus, and they know that I'm still focusing even if I'm not looking. So they continue with their talking and, and they also love me. That's right. Don't forget that you're loved. Just like I love them. That's right. And everybody watching, you're loved, you're valuable. You're Don't loved. ever forget that. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining Eden and Shana today with this video and with your time. And we hope that this helps you and helps your family and the people that you love, people you care about. and. Hopefully, people watching this are educators, people with school districts. They're the people I care about. And exactly. everybody, everybody. Exactly. Especially the dog. And if anyone needs advice on setting up a sensory integration space, talk to me. I'm right here.
And me. I'm here. Hi, Louis. Yes, Eden is here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Aw. Peace turns into a heart. It does. Peace so big hearts. Heart. Big hearts. From Eden to me. Peace turns into a heart. It does every Peace. time.